Hello, everybody. Tim Petrie, NDSU Extension Livestock Marketing Economist. Today, I'm going to talk to you uh, a short talk here on the uh, backgrounding price situation for cattle, a little bit of outlook, and also a little bit about price risk protection. One little detail here that you should know is that I am recording this on November 12th and prices do change quite rapidly. So if you are watching this uh, two weeks from now or whenever it might be, things could be uh, quite a bit different. Uh, calf prices of, you know, when the last month have went up $10 and, you know, the futures market is very volatile. So please keep that in mind. So um, this time of the year, we're wondering whether to sell or background calves and you know there's not a universal answer whether it's profitable a lot of factors go into the decision and uh, two of my counterparts uh, Brian Parman is going to talk to you about budgeting and break-even prices obviously your cost of production is very 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 important and uh, outside of the price of the feeder calf uh, feed is the most expensive cost that you have and so Carl Hoppy is going to discuss that, so be sure to watch theirs too, because I'm not going to get in to the cost side, only the price side, but that's a big part of the puzzle. So what's ahead? Here, talk a little bit about some of the calf price fundamentals that I'm going to discuss. So this is just a quick overview. Uh, you know, both corn and fed cattle prices are very important in feeder cattle prices and, you know, what calf prices are going to be the next month and also then what by uh, backgrounding uh, cattle prices the seven eight hundred nine hundred pounders uh, later on what they're going to be most of you aware that corn prices have increased for a variety of reasons smaller than expected supply and good demand from china and so on we on the positive side price wise for selling calves at least the 2020 calf crop is uh, in the U.S. is down 260,000. We did have drought in the winter wheat grazing area, but now it rained, whatever, rain, snowed, sleeted, did a whole bunch of things down there. So the wheat prospects are much improved. So that's sparked the demand for calves. Uh, you know, they are competitors to backgrounding, but they can graze calves much cheaper than we can background on purchase feeds or raised feeds up here. And so that's what sparked the market is they're back in the market down there with the uh, better wheat pasture prospects. Corn harvest is finished early and so uh, particularly compared to last year. So farmer feeders now are on the auction market seats buying calves the background. So that's sparked uh, calf prices. And But on the other hand, the uh, heavier weight, uh, seven, 800 pound cattle prices have went up too. And so calf prices in, in many feeder cattle prices have went up since mid-October. The April live cattle, the other part of the picture again is fed cattle at about 119 today but they drop off in the summer so that creates right now at least a good demand for cattle that will make that uh, April uh, slaughter rather than uh, later on in the year. Uh, we'll look at some of the big uh, discounts or the wide range in prices of calves at markets and how that might fit into backgrounding and also uh, heifers. So here's the drought monitor back in mid-October in the heart of the winter wheat grazing area there is in that heart and you see how dry it was down there and again there was very little demand for calves down there because it was so dry and then a couple of weeks ago it did rain quite a bit two to five inches in fact uh, western Oklahoma was the driest on record there for a while and now uh, the uh, not and still in very very western Oklahoma and into the neighboring states still dry but right in that heart of that winter wheat grazing uh, you know the, the the wheat was there it was planted it was up a little bit but it was just not doing well and now I just talked to my counterpart today down in Oklahoma and he said that they're that they're they're buying calves and there are more prospects for putting calves on winter wheat down there. Here 
is uh, the January feeder cattle futures and December corn futures here um, since the first of the year. And so really our attention for all through the summer was uh, for calf prices was uh, the COVID pandemic. And, uh, and now it's switched more to what corn prices are gonna do are affecting calf and, and feeder cattle prices on more of a daily basis. So let's just go back there, for instance, to uh, March and feeder cattle futures were up there at 148 and it uh, looked like it was gonna be a much better year for cattle prices in general. And then COVID hit in March and you see the, cat, uh, the January feeder cattle futures plummeted down to 114, but gradually uh, then after April and the slaughter plants got back to working and, and so on. And uh, we inched back up throughout the summer to a high there in mid-August. And uh, that's when corn was extremely low with the December corn futures down there uh, at uh, 320. And then again, we had the storm in Iowa and drought in, in Iowa and, and prices started going up and then China likes to buy low. So they started buying corn and uh, other, other factors there too that uh, I'm just not gonna get into here because I'm talking about cattle, but anyway, corn went up. And so then that put pressure on feeder cattle futures there after mid August declined back down to 125 there by mid October. And um, so, so uh, again, these would be for these futures, feeder cattle futures are based on 800 pound steer. So uh, looked a lot less favorable, although calf prices were lower then too, but a lot less favorable for, you know, only locking in 125 for January, February, March cattle uh, coming out. But then uh, you see there in the last month, they've uh, increased pretty nicely back up to 141 on the January here and, and the March future. So I think, you know, we have to look at Brian's uh, uh, budgets <clears throat> and what your break even price might be, but I think we're back up where uh, quite possibly, depending on your cost, now you can uh, lock in or, or look at some uh, profitable levels there. But again, look back to last spring and things can happen and prices can go down uh, very, very quickly. So to keep that in mind when we uh, talk about maybe doing some price risk management. So here's Omaha corn prices, just kind of to put it in perspective, although Omaha corn prices have went up a dollar here since uh, mid-August. Uh, they're still up until a couple weeks ago, were just about where they were last year. Again, last year's the dotted line and they did decline then, had har harvest pressure when harvest kind of still started some, even though it was a slow process. But so we are above uh, this week here up at uh, $4 a little bit, but still we're not, even though corn prices went up, we're not way extremely higher than they were last year at this time. That's one of the reasons why when we look at the charts, uh, calf prices are almost identical to what they were last year at this time because, you know, corn isn't that much different, although fed cattle are down a little bit. So half the picture then on cattle prices is slaughter steer prices. Again, when you're backgrounding, you're getting calves up ready for the feedlot so they can go on feed to be slaughter steers. And so a, a strengthening slaughter steer market into the next few months would be good for backgrounded cattle and supportive for the 800 pound steers that might be coming out. Uh, fed cattle, the red line there really, really struggled this year. We would have been on probably a 120 average this a year if it wasn't for COVID. And uh, you see there that, uh, you know, there were a couple times there, there were below a hundred dollars even and, and have not performed up to what we thought they would be because of the pandemic. But they've been increasing since seasonally low in July and even the last couple of weeks. And this week trading up at uh, around 110, even reports of 111, I'm not sure exactly what they're gonna average uh, by the week. And we won't know that till Monday, but up around 110. And then the uh, Dease futures, 
today are up there at 112, so that means a little bit of further increase, still kind of below last year. And uh, then um, move along, the February futures are up there at 114 or 15 or so. And so, you know, a continued uh, some improvement in fed cattle and that's supportive. But again, a lot of things affecting the market there, particularly the uh, restaurant and institutional trade demand for beef. And we don't know what's going to happen, happen with COVID. So there certainly is risk on that side as well. Uh, uh, so move along then to calf prices. And again, if you're selling calves, you want Higher prices, I suppose, if you're backgrounding calves or particularly buying them for a backgrounding program, you would prefer uh, lower prices and more on that in a little bit too. But again, calf prices, the red line there is this year and, uh, you know, they would have been 180 uh, in April like they have been the last three years and they were at 176 there uh, before COVID hit in early March. And then of course they uh, plummeted down there and again, kind of underperformed, but have not been that much different than last year. And uh, again, if you're selling, uh, last year wasn't the best year ever for sure. And, and for a longer term situation, I know we're talking about backgrounding here, but I think after the spring, when we'll start start off lower that that blue line there of 2018 will be more what it'll look next year but again COVID and corn and a lot of things play in there and so you know on the average there we were about 158 on calves this week but a, lot, a wide wide range in prices and I'll show you that in a in a minute and you know I think we're going to level off here again depends on does it keep raining in the wheat grazing and what happens to corn but usually they kind of level off here as you'll see the last uh, couple of years and so you know uh, I, I, you know I'm just don't see anything that would cause them just to spike way 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 higher uh, here and then in the next several weeks I guess then of course what we're really interested in backgrounding or what are these uh, seven eight weights going to be uh, here in in February or whenever you're going to bring them out, March or even possibly towards the, uh, you know, January, whenever your backgrounding programs are. And so, uh, you know, going on the red line there again as they underperformed because of the pandemic and similarly October 15th, we were low there and then uh, have been increasing the last several weeks up to near 140 and the, uh, the uh, November feeder cattle futures there, right up up today about uh, one forty dollars. And Gwenda, we have a January feeder cattle that we already looked at up there about one forty one, and and similar into March. So that's kind of what you're dealing with in terms of price risk management, or what the market says they'll be now. But uh, be just be aware that. Uh, th other factors do affect the market and fed cattle could struggle and with COVID and everything. So right now it looks like these backgrounded seven to eight weight steers out could, could be in that 140 uh, area, but uh, uh, there is risk. Here's the, this week's market report for the three markets that the USDA reports in North Dakota. That's uh, Napoleon, Mandan, and Dickinson. And a lot of prices on here. Lightweight calves, of course, one reason for the winter wheat demand are, are, uh, are high. And, and, uh, and uh, but let's just go to take a 550 to 600 pound steer. Then you see that wide range in prices there from 143 up to 173. So if you're buying the 173s, it'd be maybe uh, tougher to make money backgrounding unless we see a good spark in the, in the heavier weight market or uh, maybe go down and look at some of those lower prices in that 145 area or whatever where you can add value to some calves that maybe haven't had uh, shots or, or are not weaned and so you could wean them and and so on and and pick up some money that way and so again on the average there were about 158 but a wide range 
and uh, in, in, in uh, prices there. The other thing that I commented on before is, you know, there is a discount for heifers, about $20 now on the 550 to six weight heifers. So we always do background a lot of heifers in North Dakota. And I think something could consider again, because every 50 pounds we gain, they gain heifers, they gain uh, price wise compared to steers till we get down there to those 800 pounders. You see there's only a $3 uh, discount to steers and you get up to the slaughter weight if steers and heifers are the same price so uh, you know we can gain on price there as we add some value to those heifers as well but again there are replacement heifers selling very well and so might be uh, tougher to buy those expensive heifers and and make money back on it. But again, it all depends on your costs. And so look at those budget. I think Brian is gonna give you budgets for steers and heifers. Just remember that the seasonal price pattern for backgrounded cattle, seven to 800 pounds would be lower into February, would be a normal seasonal uh, occurrence from now. And uh, it's not saying that they're gonna go down this year or whatever, but that is the seasonal tendency, which would then uh, say that price risk management might be something to look at. There are a lot of price risk management tools or not a lot, but there are a number there and whatever you're familiar with and maybe have used in the past, uh, you might want to consider them again, you know, such as cash forward contracts or the video auctions or is the CME futures and options market. But again, it's uh, 50,000 pounds and, and, uh, and uh, you need to know what you're doing there and the market has been volatile. The USDA has made some significant improvements to livestock risk protection insurance. <clears throat> so I'm gonna spend a few minutes uh, talking about some of those improvements that uh, might be something for you to consider in your livestock risk protection program. <clears throat> Excuse me. So. Here's the January feeder cattle futures that I showed you before and the CME cash index, which is the average cash price in uh, the US, which is again, uh, we'll see in a minute, very similar to North Dakota, but we're up there at uh, 141 on the futures and other risk management kind of feeds off from uh, these as well. And, you know, they, they have, have improved though quite nicely to offer probably some price risk management opportunities. Our cap prices here follow the futures quite closely, particularly the I-94 markets are about on par with the CME cash index and futures. Of course, if you're up in Northern North Dakota would be a, a little bit lower. So here USDA has made, like I said, some improvements, particularly on premiums, premiums for Livestock risk protection for many years were 13% subsidy. And in the last several months here, USDA has uh, increased those. And the last one effective on September 14th, they raised them up to these levels here. So different coverage levels at the 95 and above coverage level, 35% subsidy, which is a lot more than the old 13%, get up to high subsidies on the lower coverage levels. And, uh, and if you already had an LRP contract after July 1st, then uh, at, a, at a lower subsidy than this, actually the subsidies are retroactive back. So these are the subsidies we're dealing with. Here's today's offering for the over 600 pound backgrounded feeder cattle. And again, the, the USD website has several pages. And so I just took the, the uh, 13 week contract here puts us into February 11th. That's the closest that we can get. And uh, and so uh, the, expected ending, the, the expected ending value today was a little over 140 again, right at what the futures are. USDA offered a 138.58 price, the highest price there for February 11th. And uh, and uh, the premium then would be 343. And uh, then as we lower the coverage price, you get lower premiums. And so that's something I think that you should 
consider. A lot of people say, I think I gotta lock in that highest coverage price so that my chances of getting paid are better, but we don't buy insurance hoping to collect. And uh, we buy insurance for protection, and in this case for a floor protection. So again, it all depends on your costs, and Brian's gonna go through a budget with you. But say your break-even price is down there, possibly 134, 133 or 134. Again, you need to discuss this with your banker, but you could go down there and, and get a lower coverage level to cover all your costs and, and have a floor price at a break-even level for a dollar less uh, premium there and and even go below that then the premium even goes up if your break even price is down around 130 you could get an, an even cheaper pr uh, uh, premium there so it all depends on your costs that you have to consider and then what level of risk you have and and how many you want to do so some simple steps to LRP and some other changes here. Uh, uh, again, you have to buy it from your livestock insurance agent, which is also a cro your crop insurance agent. The new information doesn't come out till after three o'clock, usually like today, um, 3.45, maybe closer to 3.30 to four. And the nice thing about LRP is unlike the, uh, 50,000 pound futures market contract. Here you say the number ahead you wanna do. There's a one head minimum. So you can just do a cup a few and, and, and see how it goes and, and ratchet up or you know however you want to. And you can uh, do up to 6,000 head on a policy, up to 12,000 head a year, but you can just do a few head here. And then uh, you pick that policy length, whether it be at February, or then, uh, you know, into March or into April, I'll show you an example in a minute. Then again, you, uh, you estimate to what they will weigh, uh, 670 or 740 or 800, whatever, and that's what you pay your premium on and what you get paid at the end, regardless of what your cattle weigh at the end, that doesn't matter. You have to pick a weight here, then choose that coverage price. And the other change here is we used to have to pay the agent up front, but the recent change now is that we don't have to pay the premium until maturity like other crop insurance products. And the uh, the time that you do this is from four in the afternoon until nine in the morning, unlike the futures, which are during the morning hours. And, uh, you know, here's then just some steer and heifer examples into other months with the one that I showed you, the February 11th on top. And heifers are always, the price is always 10% lower than steers. And so then you get a little lower premium, but we, you know, the, the, uh, 13 week is into February, the 17 week gets us into March, so you can do a March. The next higher up is uh, into April. You know, premiums go up when the longer length out and even can get a little higher price there. The current LRP cash price, 136.70, so we can lock in a little bit higher price than that. So that was kind of a quick run through of what prices are and, and some, uh, price risk management strategies. Again, I can't emphasize uh, enough how volatile the market has been the last year, and I expect the volatility to continue. So certainly, this, including some risk management might uh, be uh, prudent for you. So I'm gonna wrap things up here and, and uh, stop. And uh, if you have questions, uh, you know, you get a hold of your, uh, extension agent or farm business management record if you want more information here or get a hold of me. So good luck in your backgrounding program. We do a lot of backgrounding in North Dakota and I think we're going to do it again this year. So uh, good luck to you. Mm -hmm.